All right, so we're going to install SQL Server uh, 2008 R2. We're going to pick Database Engine, Full Text, uh, Reporting Services, and Management Tools. We're going to stick with the standard install for now. If you were installing this in production, you probably have um, split up TempDB and uh, the built-in databases from your uh, product database and have separate log. Uh, drives and things of that nature, but uh, for the uh, purposes of this lab, we're just going to put everything on the C drive. We're going to use the same service account for all the roles. We're going to go ahead and set uh, automatic startup for SQL Server agent, and we're going to start automatic startup for SQL Server browser. And I'm going to add the uh, domain admin account as well as the service account into the uh, SQL Server administrators. Uh, and for the purposes of the lab, we will not have to modify all the databases for the SQL reporting services as DB owner as well as the other databases later. Um, so that's kind of a fast track. We're going to install the uh, native mode default configuration. Uh, Server so 2012 has uh, SharePoint integration for reporting services. We want to make sure that we don't pick stuff like that for SCCM and SCOM. Uh, so just go with the basic uh, reporting services. Uh, the reason I'm going with uh, SQL Server 2008 R2 for this setup is that um, when I installed SQL Server 2012 earlier today and um, MS, like, uh, Windows Server 2012 Standard Edition, uh, I could not get the reporting services to uh, talk. So I went ahead and blew the lab out as I've got some coursework that I'm trying to work on. Um, another thing to note is, uh, and a little bit later, we're going to use ADSI Edit to add um, a container to the system folder. And what I failed to show you in the video is the purpose for that is if you're going to extend Active Directory with the extadsch.exe, which you will find in Setup and Bin and then x64 or um, in the 32-bit folder. And you'll want to have um, the ability to, I think it's schema admins and or domain or enterprise admin to be able to upgrade the schema. Um, get with your management, uh, backup your domain controllers, whatever it takes to ensure that that goes uh, properly and or you can recover from a, a catastrophic event if this is in a production site. If it's in your lab, then feel free to you know go ahead and install it at, your, um, at a whim, basically. And uh, on a couple of the forums I've seen, there's some TechNet labs out there which are very nice. Um, there's um, Microsoft um, Virtual Academy, which is very nice. It's got uh, achievements. It shows your ranking and whatnot. I encourage you to, if you have the funds, go ahead and install your own labs. You can install your own storage subsystems. You can get a much better handle on the way some of this works. A lot of these lab environments assume that you have storage before they, say, uh, help you set up a cluster share volume. And uh, a lot of times, more often than not, we're starting from scratch with things. We don't have the luxury of having just a, you know, a, uh, basically a cluster in a box or something of that degree. Uh, so so if you install your own labs from the ground up, uh, that's pretty much the best option. However, it never hurts to take advantage of those other things. So now what we're going to do is we're going to update um, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 to SP1. And um, we're going to time lapse that. Uh, this is to demonstrate that if you don't have the proper SQL um, Server um, cumulative updates and service packs that uh, System Center will give you an error and say you're, you're down level. Um, I'm not sure if I skipped the step in this, the production of this video because I'm trying to speed this along, but um, inevitably we'll, we're going to update to 2008 R2 SP2 to get uh, up to the level to where we can install Configuration Manager. And I believe in my lab for um, MSSQL 2012, I don't know that I downloaded uh, Cumulative Update 2. I attempted to do it, and I got some sort of hot, uh, hot fix and decided to go ahead and um, uh, run with what works. And uh, this setup with a 2008 
R2 SP1 on the server side and um, MSSQL 2008 R2 has worked in the past for SCOM and SCCM so uh, that's why I'm kind of using the older technologies here just to to get the lap going for now so we may revisit some of the newer technologies later so here's what we were talking about with the um, we'll go to the system container we're gonna make a new container I'm gonna call it system management after doing this um, you hit finish we're gonna go ahead and edit the container and we're gonna put the computer account for the uh, system center um, primary server within there so that's gonna be SCC MPRI for the case of my lab uh, we're gonna give it full control and allow it to um, edit this and all descending objects and and here's where you would be running your uh, ext ad sch you would do that after you create this container it will then um, update the schema and add a couple objects within active directory then you would follow the next step and install um, configuration manager now the next step that we're going to do on our, we're going to bounce over to our sql server we're going to enable tcp ip And just in case you're using named instances later, uh, if you go to IP address, you're going to want to clear out everywhere where it says dynamic ports, and you're going to want to put a static port like 2433. Um, once you're done with the TCP settings, you want to stop and start the uh, SQL service. In server 2012, TCP is already enabled. So um, once our service starts up, another prerequisite that we're going to need to do is we need to add the primary site, uh, the PRI server, as a um, local administrator on our remote SQL server. If everything is housed on one server, you don't have to worry about it. So we're going to do install a configuration manager site. Uh, you see recover because I've blown this lab out and I'm using the same uh, primary server. Uh, so we hit I accept. Click on I accept the licenses. We're going to go to the downloads, and I've already staged the downloads previously to make this go by a little quicker. Uh, this could take quite some time. I think it was some 54 uh, downloads last time I checked. All right, so uh, pick your languages. I'm just going to go with English on both of these. And uh, PRI for the primary site, just uh, to not be creative. And uh, the site name is going to be primary. And I'm going to go with the standard install for this. And we're going to go ahead and install the, uh, the, the uh, configuration console. So here we're going to say install a primary site. We can always opt into a CAS later because this is SP1. Uh, we're going to choose our remote SQL server. And um, on the back end, you know, we've got some ports that are open. The default's 1433 in the Windows firewall. I think I've got 4022 here for the uh, service broker. And uh, I want to say 1434 for the SQL browser or something along those lines. So we're going to see if we can discover it. And there's the I got you. Uh, it was saying I was down level. You saw a little blip from my um, upgrading to SP2. And we're going to come back now. And uh, we're going to hit OK. And now, of course, um, our install will work because we are at a cumulative level that we need to be. So um, I'm going to go with configure uh, communication on each role. That way we're not stuck with HTTPS. Um, everything lives on this one primary server, so we hit through the defaults on all that. And um, so here's what I was talking about, where we're going to go ahead on the um, remote SQL server and add 
the computer account. And um, it, it will basically be in the prerequisites to remind you to do this in case you forget. So now we hop back over to the... Uh, Oh, and there, that's a screenshot of the uh, Active Directory uh, being successfully uh, extended. So I apologize, I'm kind of rushing this out. I need to do some coursework as I talked about, but I also want to share this install process with you because I'm not sure when I'll be able to uh, recreate this and then additional steps that I'm going to take in the coursework. So I'm, I'm going to try to share all this stuff with you as, as we go. So the WSUS on the site is a warning. Uh, essentially later on, uh, ConfigMan will install WSUS whenever you do the site roll, so we're okay with that. Uh, configuration for SQL Server memory, I don't think I have that much memory, but um, in production I think it, it wants you to put eight I believe it's eight gigs. So we're going to go ahead and install. And for the purposes of this first segment, we're getting uh, MSSQ installed. We're going to get Configuration Manager installed, and we're going to install one site role, which is the um, reporting services, because that's the part that was blowing up on me, and uh, uh, previously, and I didn't want to get too far into this and then uh, miss that step later. Uh, not necessarily the first uh, site role you might install typically, uh, but now you know why I chose that in this demonstration. And if you click on view logs, you can see the CM trace and it's just kind of going through and injecting stuff into the databases. And if you're bored and you want to sit there for 30 or 45 minutes, or longer or less, depending upon your environment, you can see every little thing that's installed and injected into the uh, uh, configuration manager environment. And I think I mentioned this before, but due to time lapsing, this is going to go by a heck of a lot faster than it will uh, in your environment, I assure you, the whole process. All right, so now that we have our uh, Configuration Manager console set up, we're going to go to Site System Roles, choose our SQL Server, right-click on it, we're going to deploy a site role, hit Next. We're not using any proxies or whatnot. Uh, we're going to choose Reporting Service. Uh, we're going to verify the SQL instance. And notice down here it says Retrieving Instance Names for the, uh, MSS, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services. That's a, that's a thumbs up there. I'm going to add a new account. I'm going to add the account that I have that has uh, access to um, the SQL Server. This might be your service account in production. It might, might be a special SA, uh, however you would configure that. And now we're going to deploy that service or site system or rather. So, so basically that concludes this demonstration. In the next demonstration, we're going to set up some boundaries. We'll probably prove out that the reporting services works. We're going to set up some client installs and some other uh, basic tasks, and then we'll proceed on as, as uh, the demonstration continues. So uh, I hope you found this informative. I apologize for kind of uh, uh, blowing through it. And uh, hopefully I will uh, have some more content for you in the next coming days, if not weeks.